welcome back. So as you can tell, today is not a regular makeup tutorial. It is my first Halloween makeup tutorial and I'm super duper duper excited. As you may know, Halloween is my favorite time of year, favorite holiday. It's just, I have so much fun doing it. So last year I didn't have a YouTube channel when Halloween came around. So I posted a ton of photos last year, but I didn't get to do any actual tutorials. And a lot of people were asking me how I achieve those looks. So I'm super excited that I have a YouTube this year to show you guys. So this is actually a look that I did last year. People really, really liked it, and I thought I'd recreate it for you. So I'm so excited to do Halloween tutorials. I hope you're excited as well. Let me know if you have any requests. Feel free to write in the comment section below. I have a bunch of ideas, but I want to hear from you and see what you're interested in seeing. Um, please subscribe if you haven't done so already, and let me know if you like this video. I will see you guys soon, and if you want to see how I achieved this creepy look, go ahead and keep watching. Bye, guys. Yay! Let's go ahead and get started. So all I did for my hair was just I put it in braids and ponytails and that's about all I did. <laughs> now I'm going to go in with a foundation. This is Makeup Forever. And you really just want to use a lighter foundation than your skin. You could even use a white paint if you wanted. Um, I just chose foundation because I thought that everything would blend better on it. But feel free to use whatever floats your boat. And now I'm going to go in with the Anastasia Beverly Hills Cream Contour Kit with these two shades right here. I'm just going to start sculpting out those cheekbones. So I'll use this warmer shade first and then go on a darker one. You probably could just start the darker shade, but I wanted to really sculpt it up first. So I'm using these brushes. They're from BH Cosmetics. I'll list them in the description box below because they come as a set. But these ones are great for a look like this. So now I'm going in with the darker shade from the palette and I'm going to just sculpt it out even more, making it a lot more defined. Normally with contouring, I would then blend it out a lot, but that's not actually what I'm going to do here. I'm going to keep it pretty dramatic and pretty blunt on the face. Next, I'm going to bring those contour shades up on the temples and the, on my forehead. I'm not going to contour too, too much up here. This is really just to give my face a little bit more dimension. Um, I'm going to be covering most of the forehead with cracked glass anyways, but I do this just to give the face a little bit more dimension. So now I'm going with this small a stippling brush from e.l.f. and I'm just going to blend it out just a little bit. Like I said, I don't want it to be too blended out because that, I want it to be that dramatic of a look. So I'll blend it out more on the forehead and the temples, but on the cheeks, I'm going to keep that as dramatic as possible. So next I'm going to go ahead and set that contour that we did with the powder. So this is Java Contour Powder from Anastasia. I'm just using an eyeshadow brush and I'm just going to go over and blend out with this eyeshadow brush. So all I'm doing is blending and blending, just trying to make it a little bit more seamless and to set that clean contour that we did there. I'm also going to do a little bit of contouring under my lip just to make them appear a little bit more fuller. Now I'm going with blush. This is MAC Pro Longwear in the shade I'm a Lover. And I'm really going to pack on that blush. Pretty much all the things in this look are a lot more dramatic than usual, so I wanted a very pink blush and I wanted to put a lot on it because you know dolls are pretty dramatic looking so that's what I'm doing here just applying that blush just to the apples of my cheeks. Now I'm going to go back in and just put a little bit more of the contour shade of the powder just in case I lost any when I was putting the blush on but this is totally optional I'm just super OCD and wanting to go back and just blend it out just a little bit more. And I also wanted to contour my nose just a little bit with the powder, so all I'm doing is placing that powder on the sides of my nose, again just to sculpt it out just a little bit more. Now I'm going in with this brow pencil, actually this is from Alme. I pretty much just used whatever I had, but this, this is just to create the little freckles on the face, so if you wanted to use a brown eyeliner or anything that's brown, the, a gel liner, anything like that, that's perfect. I just wanted to use... Uh, whatever I had there and I don't use this for my eyebrows anymore so I thought it'd be good to use this product for once. <laughs> um, so all I'm doing here again is just creating those fake freckles. Now I'm going to go ahead and do my eyebrows. This, I just fast forwarded through this part because I didn't really do too too much. I basically took the shade, uh, it's from Anastasia Beverly Hills a Brunette or a dark, a dark brunette I think. Uh, and all I did was just fill in my eyebrows just a lot more than I usually do and just a little bit more dramatic with the arch there. So. That's pretty much all I did for the eyebrows. You don't have to do too much to them. Like I said, you're going to be drawing a lot up on your forehead area, so you're not really going to have too much attention on them anyways. So just fill in your eyebrows as usual and maybe just a little bit more dramatic than you normally Next, would. going in with this NYX Jumbo Pencil in the shade Milk. 
I'm going to be sculpting out that under eye area where it's going to be white. Now this is just going to be an appearance to make the eyes look a lot bigger. I did go quite large in this area this time, you know, this was a recreation like I mentioned, but I think it looks fine in the end. Uh, again, I'm using this jumbo pencil mainly because I wanted it to be something easy that you could go out and get, I'm not using my special paints. Um, so this is just an easy way to create that white look. I did bring it up on the actual lid and I probably wouldn't do that next time just because it wasn't super easy to blend the shadows as you'll see in just a moment. Um, but it was easy to draw on. So next time I'll probably just put it just on the under eye area. Now I'm going with my finger and I'm just blending it out just a little bit to make it a little bit less harsh on the eyes. But I'm really only doing that on the upper lid, preparing it for the shadows. Now I'm going with a black eyeshadow. This is from Makeup Peak. This is in the shade Corrupt. Any black eyeshadow will do. And as I mentioned earlier, it was really hard to blend this out. So, you know, you don't have to be super precise because the attention is not really going to be on the art of how my eyeshadow is. But all I'm doing is going back in from the inner to outer corner, just blending out that eyeshadow as best as I could. It took quite a while, like I said, because the shadow didn't quite blend well on that cream base that we put. So in the future, definitely use maybe like an eyeshadow base. That would be probably a little bit easier for you to blend out the shadows. Next, I'm going with this powder, the Lumiere Luxe Powder from Ben Nye. This stuff is crazy, you guys. Look at the pigment on this. I'm only using it on my eyes today, but I'm going to be using it in a lot of my tutorials uh, for this upcoming month. All I'm doing is using my finger and just placing this on the lid. This is just to give the eyes just a little bit more of a pop, but that's all I'm doing is just placing it on the lid with my finger. Next, I'm going to be going in with my Wolf FX palette. You guys, this is such an amazing palette. It was only 30 bucks, and I got it at a store called Camera Ready Cosmetics. You can go online, but there is one here in San Diego. And all I'm doing here is using it to sculpt out the outline of that under eye area. If you don't have paints like this, you could also use an eyeliner or a liquid liner, anything that'll do um, just to create this under eye area in the lashes. So now I'm just going in and creating lashes along the outlined area. You can be a lot more precise with this. I wasn't trying to make this really, really detailed. I just wanted to go in and create that line. Again, the focus is going to be on the forehead um, once we put the cracked glass there. But uh, here you go, just putting in with the paints. Again, creating the outline for the under eye area as well as the lashes. Now I'm just going back in and blending out that eyeshadow just a little bit more now that we put that glittery pigment on. But now we're just going to move on to the eyes. So now I'm just curling my lashes, just preparing them for the large, voluminous lashes that I'll be putting on. Also putting on just one coat of mascara. This is the Physician's Formula that I love. Um, and here I am just, again, doing just one coat of mascara, trying to prep them for the large lashes that I'll be using. And the lashes that I'm using today, they're from Sephora. I can't remember the name, but I believe they're the mink ones. I'll look them up online and talk about them below. But they are just so fun, so dramatic, and with this look, you really want to do some dramatic eyes because I think that's what really brings the look all together. Um, but use whatever you have. If you don't want to use lashes, feel free to just do some coats of mascara. But again, I think the lashes really, really make a difference for this look. So here I am just putting on my falsies, and then we're going to move on to the next step. This is what it should look like so far. Look at those creepy eyes. <laughs> And let's move on to the lips. So I'm using a liquid lipstick. This one is in the shade Karina. This is from Anastasia Beverly Hills. And I'm just using a lip brush to go ahead and place that lipstick and really sculpt out the heart shape that I want on my lips. I would really recommend using a liquid lipstick for this step, any color that you want, mainly because we're not drawing symmetrical shapes in the top and bottom. So if you close your lips, you don't want them to transfer from one lip to the other. So that would be eliminated if you're using a liquid lipstick because there won't be any transfer. So now I'm just filling in the heart shape that I created, and this is what your lips should look like so far. So I want to create a little bit more of a nutcracker type now, so that's what I'm doing here. I am just drawing lines from the outside corners of my lips down on the sides, and then I'm going to create, you know, a few fake screws just so it looks a little bit more realistic. This is just using the Wolf FX paint from that palette that I showed earlier, but again, you feel free to use eyeliner or whatever works for you. Now I'm going into the white shade from the palette and I'm just creating a little bit of a white reflection just to give it a little bit of touch, totally optional, don't need to do it. Now I'm going back in with that contour shade that I used in my cheeks earlier and all I'm doing is just placing this on the outer sides of the lips and where I put those lines mainly to create a little bit more of a shadow and make it a little bit more realistic. 
Um, I try to use a little bit more of shadows and highlights in this just so it does look a little bit more realistic. I'm going to try doing that with a lot more of my looks this year. So here I am just placing those uh, contour shades just where I feel fit. So now let's go on to the cracked doll. You could just stop there, but that's just not fun. So honestly, you guys, there, there isn't much to talk about for this part. All I did was take the brush that came with the palette and just create a bunch of, you know, abstract lines. At some edges, I'm going to just kind of put a little bit more of the paint just to create more of a shadow. But I'm just kind of connecting everything. I was thinking kind of when you see lightning bolts, how they kind of go in all different directions. That's pretty much what I had in mind when I started to draw these. So just be creative. I couldn't recreate this if I tried. All I'm doing is just placing a bunch of lines, connecting them, shading some areas, making some areas a little bit darker than others, and just kind of making all my forehead uh, covered in these cracks. So if you think about it, if you're going to crack a mirror, there's not going to be any specific lines. It's not going to be perfect. So you really can't do wrong here. So go ahead and just, just start drawing and see where it takes you. So I'll pretty much just let you watch uh, me create some lines and shadows and just go to town and see what I can come up with. Next I'm using that white shade from the Wealth FX palette and I'm just putting some white, lit a little shading all over just to make it a little bit more highlighted. Do this wherever you think looks good and you don't need to do it on every single corner. Now I'm going with this stage one from Mayron and I'm just taking it on the end of a Q-tip and I'm just trying to make it a little bit more dramatic. I did that really dark black spot in the center of my head, kind of as the center of the wound and I'm just placing the blood all around where I think it looks like it should go. Um, I ended up dripping it down my nose a little bit more off camera, but honestly, just put the blood wherever you think it should go. And that's the final look, you guys. I hope that you love it. Um, definitely like this video if you did and comment down below, but this is the final look. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys soon in my next Halloween tutorials. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any out on any of the upcoming videos. Bye, guys.